Pozdrav svima, ja sam Đorđe i dobrodošli na kanal Lične financije. Ukoliko ti je prvi put da gledaš neki moj video, na ovom kanalu pričamo o budžetiranju, štednji, investiranju i svemu onome što može uticati na tvoj novčanik. Kada smo već kod investiranja, danas pričamo o diversifikaciji. I hajde da krenemo od osnovnog pojma, a to je diverzifikacija. Diverzifikacija je tehnika smanjenja rizika i nju investitori koriste kada žele da umanje neki potencijalni rizik kojem se izlažu i to će učiniti tako što će ulagati svoj kapital u različite pozicije. I te pozicije će biti raspoređene u različite sektore, možda čak u različite finansijske instrumente ili čak u različite imovinske klase. Ideja je da svoj kapital podelimo na različite pozicije koje će reagovati različito na neki isti događaj. Iako u načelu ova ideja deluje razumno, ukoliko bismo pitali 10 investitora o njihovom mišljenju o diversifikaciji, vrlo je verovatno da ćemo dobiti 10 različitih odgovora. Ukoliko pogledaš neke od mojih prethodnih videa, vidjet ćeš da sam ja veliki zagovornik maksimalne diversifikacije kroz investiranje u ETF-ove koji prate široko diversifikovane indekse. Čisto radi da rešimo nedoumice, ETF možemo posmatrati kao jednu virtualnu korpu koju se može nalaziti na hiljade akcija različitih kompanija. I samim tim je ovo perfektan vid diversifikacije. Međutim, da li je diversifikacija baš uvek dobra? To možemo da otvorimo diskusiju. I upravo bih želeo da poslušamo šta Warren Buffett ima da kaže o diversifikaciji. My name is Mark Hake, I'm from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and I am very interested in your policies on diversification and also how you concentrate your investments. And I've studied your annual reports going back a good number of years, and there's been years where you had a lot of stocks in your marketable equitable securities portfolio and there was one year where you only had three in 1987. Um, so I have two questions. Um, given the number of stocks that you have in the portfolio now, what does that imply about your view of the market in terms of is it fairly valued, that kind of uh, idea. And second of all, uh, whenever you, it seems that whenever you take a new investment you never take less than about five percent and never more than about 10% of the total portfolio with that new position. And I wanted to see if I'm correct about that. Yeah, well, on the second point, that, there, that really isn't correct. We, uh, we have positions which you don't even see because we only listed the ones above 600 million in the last report, and obviously those are all smaller positions. Sometimes be that's because they're smaller companies and we couldn't get that much money in. Sometimes it's because the price has moved up after we've bought them. And, Sometimes it's because we're, we may be selling the position down even. But, uh, so we have no, there's nothing magic. We like to put a lot of money in things that, uh, that we feel strongly about. And that gets back to the diversification question. Uh, you know, we, we think diversification is, as practiced generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Uh, they, Diversification is a protection against ignorance. I mean, if you want to make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably, uh, because there aren't that many wonderful businesses at, that are understandable to a single human being in all likelihood and it and to have some super wonderful business and then put money in number 30 or 35 on your list of attractiveness and, and forego putting more money into number one just strikes Charlie and me as, as, as madness and it, it, it's conventional practice and it it, it may uh, you know if all you have to achieve is is average uh, it, it's uh, it it's, uh, may preserve your job but it's it's a confession in our view that you don't really understand the businesses that you own. Um, you know, I base I mean as on a personal portfolio basis. You know, I own one stock. You know, but it's a business I know, it, and, and it leaves me very comfortable. Uh, so, 
you know, do I do I need to own 28 stocks in order to you know, have proper diversification? You know, uh, be nonsense. And within Berkshire, I could pick out three of our businesses, and I would I would be very happy if they were the only businesses we owned, and I had all my money in Berkshire. Now I love it the fact that we can find more than that, and that we keep adding to it. But three wonderful businesses is is, is more than. Uh, more than you need in this life to do very well and uh, uh, the average the average person isn't going to run into that I mean if you look at how the fortunes were built in this country uh, they weren't built out of a portfolio of 50 companies they were they were built by someone who who uh, identified with us with a wonderful business coca-cola is a great example a lot of fortunes have been built on that and there aren't 50 coca-colas you know, there aren't 20 if there were it'd be fine we could all go out and diversify like crazy among that group and, and get results that would be equal to owning the really wonderful one. But you're not going to find it. And uh, and the truth is you don't need it. I mean, if you, if you have a really wonderful business is very well protected against against the vicissitudes of the economy over time and, and, and the competition. I mean, you know, we're talking about businesses that are resistant to effective competition. And three of those will be better than 100 average businesses at, uh, uh, and, and they'll be safer incidentally I mean uh, they there is less risk in owning three easy to identify wonderful businesses there than there is in owning 50 uh, well-known big businesses and uh, uh, it's amazing what has been taught over the years in finance classes about that but uh, uh, I can assure you that that uh, I would rather pick if, if I had to bet the next 30 years on the fortunes of, uh, of my family that would be dependent upon the income from a given group of businesses, I would rather pick three businesses from those we own than own a diversified group of 50. Charlie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what he's saying is that much of what is taught in modern corporate finance courses is twaddle. I hajde sada da vidimo koje su to ključne stvari koje je Warren Buffett rekao u svom izlaganju. Ukoliko ne želiš ili ne znaš da analiziraš kompanije i čitaš izveštaje i analize, onda je investiranje u ETF-ove savršena odbrana od neznanja i od nenamernih grešaka. Ali, kao drugo, ukoliko si pasionirani investitor koji zna da analizira kompanije i dobro prepoznaje šanse onda ima mnogo više smisla da tvoj portfolio ne bude diverzifikovan, već da svoj kapital investiraš u mali broj dobro odabranih kompanija. Zašto je ovo tako? Pogledajmo na ovom primjeru. Ukoliko imamo portfolio od 30 akcija u koje smo investirali podjednak iznos kapitala i baš jedna od tih akcija bude odličan pogodak i utrostruči svoju vrednost, ovo će značiti da će ceo portfolio skočiti samo 6,7%. Sa druge strane, da smo imali koncentrisani portfolio od samo 4 akcije i da je jedna od njih utrostručila svoju vrednost, onda bi ceo portfolio uvećao svoju vrednost za 50%. Naravno, mana ove strategije se javlja u slučaju kada neka od pozicija izgubi na svoju vrednosti i da će tada koncentrisani portfolio mnogo više trpeti nego diverzifikovani portfolio. I upravo ovdje leži jedna bitna činjenica zašto mnogi smatraju da je investiranje kockanje. Zato što mnogi kada krenu da investiraju, investiraju u jednu ili u dve pozicije, znači nisu dobro diverzifikovani i kao drugo ne poznaju kompanije u koje investiraju dovoljno dobro. Zbog toga ja bih savjetovao da na početku svog investicijonog puta investiraš u dobro diverzifikovane ETF-ove. Naravno, ukoliko želiš ti možeš investirati u ETF-ove do kraja svog života i nema ništa lošeg u tome, a ukoliko želiš možeš i da kreneš drugim putem, a to je da prvo investiraš u ETF-ove i onda dok o, ne naučiš bolje, držiš svoj kapital u ETF-ovima, a paralelno sa time kreneš da se edukuješ. I tek kada smatraš da imaš dovoljno znanja, tek onda kreneš da investiraš u individualne kompanije. I eto, 
Toliko o diverzifikaciji, čuli smo argumente i za i protiv. Naravno, na tebi će biti da formiraš svoj investicijni stil i odlučiš kojim ćeš putem krenuti. U svakom slučaju, želo bih da ti se zahvalim na gledanju. Ukoliko već nisi, ostavi like, pretplati se na kanal i vidimo se uskoro u novom videu. Pozdrav!